everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today to be talking with another one of our hall stars uh, who is going to be appearing in this weekend's Christmas class reunion. And we have Tanner Novlin on the podcast. And Tanner, thank you so much for talking with us. Thanks for having me. You're very in the Christmas spirit. I love that you have a great hat on. It's perfect. I got the tree behind me right now. The podcast you can't really see. So trying to, trying to feel weird. Yeah, it, 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 I'm, I'm getting the strong holiday vibes from you as well. So it's good. Good, good. good. Well, I mean, it's, it's easy when you have the, the Hallmark Channel and the, all the Hallmark movies. Those are the ones that really <laughs> get, me, get me going in this. But the yeah. music is good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. When that kicks right. on, but it's a little bit early for me. From, but when the Hallmark movies start coming on, I'm always like, okay, we're in the yeah. seat. I'm yeah. Well, since this is the first time we've had you on the podcast, uh, we like to get to know our guests. And so tell us a little bit about yourself and how, what inspired you to get into acting? Uh, well, I'm originally from Canada. Uh, so Hallmark and Christmas and everything, I'm very, <laughs> very familiar with, with cold and winter, all those, uh, you know, movies, all those sets was very much kind of a part of my childhood. Um, but I moved to Los Angeles when I was 21 years old um, to become an American, uh, didn't necessarily hear to pursue acting to so to speak I just thought uh, my mom was originally from Sacramento and I thought oh it'd be great to be a dual citizen maybe I could work in the states one day or something like that I was kind of trying to find myself and uh, this it kind of found me here I started modeling a little bit and uh, someone suggested an acting class I'd never been you know exposed to any sort of stuff like that I'm from Saskatchewan there's not a lot of acting programs back then there was no vine or or really, you know, I'm dating myself now, but no YouTube <laughs> or anything like that to yeah. really kind of play around with. But I always loved movies and was inspired by it. But the thought of, you know, that being a career was so far away from me. Um, mm-hmm. And so when I was in uh, in Los Angeles for a little bit, I, got, I caught the bug in an acting class. And one thing leads to another. And now we have Christmas class reunion this weekend. So yeah. <laughs> that's a big jump. There. <laughs> Do you remember the first role you ever got on camera? Uh, yes, I didn't. Uh, I think I did. Yeah. Epi- I did an episode of uh, that series bones. I had a guest star. Oh. Bones, that was my first uh, like network television gig, but my mm-hmm. first, I had a TJ Maxx commercial was my first mm-hmm. experience, which unfortunately it was like one of those back to school, you know, you know, beanies, not, beanies are 10 99 back to school, right. like the big <laughs> president, like one of those and it never aired. And so oh, and no. it was the first audition I'd ever been on ever, you know, the big cattle call, so to speak of like, thousands of people and I'm like oh okay this is it and I booked and I was like well this is easy and this is the problem and then I didn't work again for three years so <laughs> I found out fast yeah so you've done a number of of commercials mm-hmm. and uh, when we were doing our preview uh our season preview that was one of the first things somebody one of our co-hosts said is that oh he's the guy from the Liberty Mutual <laughs> Yeah, that ad was. Uh, Do you get that a lot? <laughs> yes, all yes. all the time. It, it's so fun, um, and so many different. Wa- they played that thing so much that it's yeah. it was become. I'm like, are people okay with it now? Because we've got. Do I get? Does it become annoying after a while? I don't know what a commercial <laughs> that plays that much, but um, that was a really like fun uh, role, and uh, it's really interesting to see, like, kind of just you know, we shot it in like an hour and a half. It was kind of imp- yeah. improvised, fun collaboration with these writers. And we made this in an hour and then it went, you know, that was that. And then to see how well it was received, it was really kind of special. That doesn't really happen too often with a commercial uh, anymore. So, well, and it's true what you're saying, because unlike say, if you were in a movie, we might see that movie, you know, maybe two, three times. Whereas like that commercial, I've seen that I can't even tell you. <laughs> and, and all different channels, you know, yeah. so we were, I think we were in Las Vegas with uh, my friend had a, had a movie thing. We tagged along and, and uh, it just so happened to be the NFL draft. And I couldn't make it through the lot because they played it on, you know, the sports channels so much that I was like, Oh my gosh. So never, I'm like, oh, I should <laughs> run for politics or something as the, <laughs> well, maybe not, yeah. maybe not the Liberty Mutual guy would be very good with in politics, but <laughs> it, was, it was fun to be, uh, you know, to be so well, yeah. really cool. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? 
If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. So you were on Roswell. Uh And uh, did you get to, did you work with Heather Hemmons on that? I did. Yeah, yeah I was actually queen. Um, Heather Hemmons' love interest for for some. Oh, are you? Uh, okay. Uh, season three. Yeah, I um, love she's her. The, she's the best. Yeah, yeah. she's really, she's really talented and mm-hmm. a director. I was in one of her episodes. She oh, directed, really? which was really cool. I think the first one. She's she's, yeah, that woman's got it all going on. Yeah. So you were on Bold and the Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Still am. Still, okay, still am. Mm-hmm. I I did like a deep dive into your character. And this sounds wild. Uh, <laughs> so, you, know, you played Finn, right? Yes. And if I if I'm understanding from the Bold and the Beauty wiki, uh, there's you had uh, you had paternity tests were involved and love mm-hmm. and comas and scheming mothers, all kinds of fun. Oh yeah, this is in two years. So yeah, I, I two. This is two years of. Yeah. of I've, I have a I have a biological mother and adopted mother. Yes. Um, <laughs> That and your biological a, mother sounds like a trip. She, uh, yeah, she, my my wife and her don't on the show don't get along very well, yes. and so that always causes friction. There's there's tons of drama on it, and it's <laughs> it's so fun to do because you really have no idea. I mean, I was dead at one point, and then yes, I came back. I was a little safe. yeah. When you read that you were dead, that must have been concerning. Yeah, that was concerning because I, <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> I mean, I had you know they gave me the out of like saying like well we think that we would probably like to bring you back but you never know as an actor anytime you die on a show an actor it's kind of scary because you're dead and but they were reassuring them like no we're gonna bring you back um and like I said I was like oh okay but then they they did and um it was it was quite at that time uh you know I think there was a a poll online to 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 bring Finn back and so it was really Uh. I, I felt really honored for the fans to be so upset that I was you know potentially leaving the show um but Only yeah in- Dr. Dr. Finnegan has had his share of, of drama and you yeah. never know what you're going to get in that script and that's what makes this job so fun is um yeah sometimes the, s- the scenarios are like wow is this really happening but you buy in and it all kind of it all makes sense yeah. in the end and it's the fun of it and I think the fun for yeah. the fans is guessing what's going to happen because y- you all think you're pretty good but yeah. you know these writers they take you for a roller coaster ride us too as actors is fun yeah only in soap operas or Marvel movies does nobody ever really die. That's true. <laughs> like, that is true. <laughs> no, I'm having uh, a lot of fun with it though. Yeah, uh, I, I would think that would be fun playing a really dishy role like that and like having, uh, I guess it's you and, and Steffi, right? Is your Yeah, uh, Jack you know, couple is my, uh, yeah. I was, mm-hmm. Dr. Finnegan had a nice simple life as an ER doctor and Steffi Forrester showed up <laughs> in her ER room one day and it's been trouble ever since. Yeah. He loves her very much. So he's willing to go to the lengths. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. No, it's <laughs> Well, I know that those soaps are super challenging as far as the amount of pages that you have to learn. Uh, yeah, that it's must be wild. intense. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Um, and the speed, I, you know, we, we do one takes all Mm -hmm. all day if we get the words right and the cameras move right you got to be on your deal because they'll uh they'll like buy moving in one you're like well that that kind of felt like a then they they always you know if you wanted to really wanted another one you i'm sure you could ask for the take but that train is always just in motion and so especially when we first when i first started you really got to get with the with the program and yeah be able to jump on board because if you don't that train just moves down the track and you're left behind so yeah um, I was fortunate to have some help, some uh, really great actors, uh, uh, Torsten Guy and 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 John McCook and and Jacqueline really were help helped me to get up to speed. Um, 
with this soap opera because it is a completely different format than say like uh, Christmas class reunion which we just mm-hmm. did so yeah but it's well, also it's on its own thing every movie but it probably it, helps you get ready for doing a Hallmark movie because those are also very fast mm-hmm. yeah they are and uh and I used to, you know, I used to be like, like every actor, a little nervous around dialing. I'm much more comfortable with, with dialogue now. Just the, it's definitely a muscle of practicing. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I'm working tomorrow and I think I have 63 pages tomorrow. I mean, that's oh all the movie we've got in one day. So that's a lot. So if y'all don't think I'm that great of an actor on one day, it's just like, okay, there was a <laughs> all right. We say it always, it only lives through a day, but um, it's really like a play. You know, we, we put it yeah. every day we get there and, and we do this kind of almost you know like a play we put it up and it lives for a day and we keep moving on so you know it's pretty fun that's that's amazing we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the good folks at baker publishing group they have a special deal right now if you go to their website bakerbookhouse.com slash featured slash hallmarkies and enter code hallmarkies 40 that you will get 40 percent off any of the books that we're talking about today and today we are talking about sweet historical romances this is the perfect book for the hearty in your life if you have a fan of one calls the heart they will love these books First, let's start with Under the Starry Skies by Tracy Peterson. When an accident leaves Cassandra Barton incapacitated, she spends her time compiling a book of stories about the men working on the Santa Fe Railroad. But worry grows as revolutionaries set out to destroy the railroad. As danger intensifies, Cassie and her longtime friend Brandon must rely on their faith to overcome the obstacles that stand in the way. Next, A Model of Devotion by Mary Connolly. A brilliant engineer, Jilly Stiles, sets her focus on fulfilling her dream of building a mountaintop railroad and remaining independent. But when a cruel and powerful man goes to dangerous lengths to try to make Jilly his own, marrying her friend Nick may be the only way to save herself and her dreams. Next, A Daughter's Courage by Misty M. Beller. Charlotte Durand sets out on an expedition in search of a skilled artisan who can repair a treasured chalice, but her hike becomes much more daunting when a treacherous snowstorm sets in. When Damien Levette finds Charlotte stranded, they must work together to survive the peril of the mountains against all odds. A Gem of Truth by Kimberly Woodhouse, longing for a fresh start, Julia Schultz takes a job as a Harvey girl at the El Tovar Hotel, where she's challenged to be her true self. United by the discovery of a legendary treasure, Julia and master jeweler Christopher Miller find hope in each other. But when Julia's past catches up with her, will she lose everyone's trust? Then The Lady of Galway Manor by Jennifer Dybul. In 1920 Galloway, amid the Irish War of Independence, the daughter of a British landlord becomes an apprentice jeweler to the descendant of the creator of the famed Clotta Ring. As the two learn to work together and see each other in a new light, they start to uncover the true meaning of love, loyalty, and friendship. And finally, The Secrets of Emberwild by Stefania H. McGee. Nora Fenton inherits a struggling horse farm and a dangerous secret from her father, one that new horse trainer Silas Cavallaro threatens to uncover as he searches for the truth behind his own father's death. As the two grow closer over their shared passion for horses, the mysteries and dangers of the past loom closer than ever. So head over to bakerbookhouse.com slash featured slash Hallmarkies to pick up one of these great books and use code Hallmarkies40 for 40% off these titles from November 14th to December 12th. That's bakerbookhouse.com slash featured slash Hallmarkies and use code Hallmarkies40 for 40% off. All right. Well, let's talk about Christmas class reunion. This looks pretty wild. I'm excited about it. Why don't you tell our audience a little bit about it? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's, it was, it's a little bit of different Christmas. Uh, uh, I say Christmas movie, horror movie in the sense of um, we have a nice, a little bit more of an ensemble this, this time, even though uh, Amy T garden uh, plays L the lead L Chamberlain. Um, but there's a bunch of, of course, there's a graduating class. And the theme of the movie is, is kind of who you once were uh, versus who you are now and what your expectations for life are. And so mm-hmm. we've had, we've been this cursed class. We've never been able to get back together. Our, you know, our graduation was spoiled and, and our first reunion was spoiled. And so L is very determined to get everyone back together. And um, everyone has kind of moved on in their lives in the sense of maybe they aren't quite what they thought they might be. And so it's kind of that struggle 
with who you are and what you're, yeah. you know, like I said, wanting to be in life. So it, it hits on some like really cute themes, but it's also Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so we have like, uh, have that <laughs> element to it. Um, yeah, and it's a really sweet story of like kind of belonging and, and yeah. being okay with who you are in, in yourself in the end. Well, that's great. So it has this mm-hmm. ensemble cast mm-hmm. and was the, was it difficult at all or was it uh did you have to work at like developing that friendship and that chemistry between this group to make I think it feel believable no I, luckily like everyone is so so giving and so excited to be there we all like gelled pretty pretty normally we got to do a fun uh flashback sequence to 2007 the original graduation so that was a really fun oh, day oh no so you guys uh, are playing teenagers yeah <laughs> so i have a great wig um which mayor unfortunately may not have been inspired by my actual hair in 2006 <laughs> very uh zach efron in the uh what was it high school music yeah the high school with, the, with the flipped out sides i was you're like what do you want to do i'm like well let me just pull this up i think i have a picture of what i look like, I'm like that's perfect i'm like Oh no. Yeah. Okay. You're like, get ahead in the game here. I yeah, no, but it was really fun to see everyone, you know, with some embraces yeah. and all the, those awkward teen years. Um, no, as we're all adults, yeah. it was really fun to do that part. So that was kind of a cool bonding experience too. Yeah. So your love interest is, is Amy Teagarn's character, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nett. So did you work at all to, to, did you chemistry read or anything like that with her? We, we didn't, but when we got there, um, she's so lovely. I mean, that's not, I think Hallmark mm-hmm. does a pretty good job of, of, you know, picking good people who they think would, um, you know, go well together. Anyone I've ever met in the Hallmark world is like such a lovely, giving, nice person. So I don't, I think we're starting a, a ahead of the game to begin with that. Um, but no, we, we hit it off. I think, you know, we had, a, had some dinner and stuff like that and, and caught up and she's, she's just the absolute best. And, and so sweet. And so we got along really well. And I think it comes across on the screen. Although at the mm-hmm. start of this movie, Devin is very much an opposite to Elle. And mm-hmm. so they have a lot to learn from each other. And um, yeah, happenstance circumstances, <laughs> like we might have you know, seen <laughs> yeah. before, uh, help these two characters grow and, and kind of realize what they need. So well, and you have Stephanie Bennett in this. She's great. Yeah, she Hilarious. is. Yes, totally. The whole cast. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, Andy, he played. Uh, so we may have a Santa Claus appearance in this. Ooh, yeah. yeah. And took it so so seriously in the <laughs> best way possible. Yes. Um. Yeah, and he's a phenomenal Santa in the movie. In the he he plays the principal Holt, but then he's Holt is all Santa. So it's kind of this wink, and we know it's the principal playing it. So it's this fun little juxtaposition. But I was standing outside at lunch break. And um, I'm FaceTiming with my family who's back and I'm saying hi to my daughter who's three years old. And I look over at, at the wagon. And I'm like, well, there's Santa Claus. I'm <laughs> I mean, with my three, I was like, oh, I know how to be best dad of the year. Uh... So I, said, I said, hey, Poppy is my daughter's name. I said, come, come here. Guess, you know, Canada, I'm in Vancouver. It's close to the North Pole. Guess who I'm here with? He's he's gonna be in the movie, and she and I spin it around. Oh my god! There's Santa Claus, and he was such a gamer. He read, ho, ho ho ho, hi Bobby, and she, she stands at attention like a pencil, like yes, Santa. So I got he got me so much cred. That's so, so cute. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I'm not very often going to be in a movie where that sort of stuff happens. So I love. Yeah, that. yeah, mm. yeah. That's so cute. And your wife, she was on Bold and Beautiful, right? Gail, oh, yeah, 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 years and years ago when she was like, yeah, like 18, 19, 18 or 19 or something like that. So, oh, yeah, okay, fun full circle. She gave me a ton of tips to start. I was gonna say, does she give yeah. me? Yeah, a- <laughs> I was like, honey, give me. She's like, well, she's like, it's been a really long time, but I think it's probably <laughs> kind of the same. So, yeah. she's uh, yeah, she helped me out a ton during that, during that time for sure. <laughs> cool. So, have you been to your own uh reunions, high school reunions, or something like you that? You know what? I, I missed mine we had like a 10-year one and I didn't and I didn't go to it but I my hometown has um 500 people in it so Uh it's extremely small and I still keep in touch with about four or five of my high school friends um and and we always would go back to my parents still live in that town and so I'll Mm -hmm. go back to Paradise Hill and see uh uh, my friends who I've known since kindergarten because we would be the class was so small that 
those same 20 or 30 kids would just move from the first grade to the second grade to the third grade. And so you talk about people who know, know you through and through they've, you know, ever since I was a baby. So it's really cool. So I can even touch yeah. that way, but yeah. So now that you've done the movie though, if you were going to give advice for, if for people going to a, uh, their reunions, what would you say? Make it a great I reunion. Think, well, you see, this is what's funny. And this is what the movie really, really explores is when you meet back up with your people, I think everyone's had this before. You kind of fall right back into the old yeah. like uh, dynamics of what you were in high school. And so it, it, it's like, I've, I'm like, I'm a completely different person in some sense. And in some <laughs> sense, I have the same, you know, values of what I've grown up with, of course, but everyone's grown and moved on. So I think uh, some good advice would be to be open-minded and someone who once was the way they were may not be that way. And, and to really look at the growth of each person and not just in, in a monetary sense of, of I'm doing this now, or I live here now, or what, you know, it's just who you are as a person and what's going on. So I think yeah. this, that's kind of the theme of this movie, which strikes a struck a really uh, mm -hmm. chord with me anyway. It is true what you're saying about how you go back to those spots. Uh, I, I feel that way whenever, I, I mean, I'm not with my siblings that often because we're all over the place, but, uh, but if we do get together, it does, you, we do kind of revert back to, uh, to those roles that you had growing up. Do you get like nuggies from your, your yeah. sister? Like, I go right back like, no, stop it, mom. mom. Like, Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. She's, she's in my closet again, stealing my sweater. Stop wearing that. You can't wear that. Yes, that's right. <laughs> it's true. Uh, so this movie looks like it has a lot of comedy. I mean, we see in the promo, uh, there's like <laughs> the uh, Amy Teagarden looks like has her carry moment. <laughs> she's freaking out, getting all wet. Yeah, she gets funny. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. Um, that may or may not have something to do with my character. So, oh, yeah, there's yeah. There, there, there's some <laughs> there's some bad blood at the start, but yeah, there's a a lot of sweet, um, definite laughable moments uh, in this movie, and and like any movie, it, it's all grounded in a ton of heart. Um, mm -hmm. And so I felt for a lot for these characters when they yeah. you know moving through this. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarkie in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Well, we have some fun holiday questions to end oh, the interview right. off. Lay on me. All right. What is your favorite holiday drink? Does it have a like <laughs> hot cocoa, eggnog? It can be an adult beverage, whatever you want. I do a really good Irish coffee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Really good Irish coffee, which I, oh man, I'm going to drop the name of it. This is the famous place in San Francisco. And it's right down by the way. We went there. My wife's sister. I've lives. seen that on Food Network. Yes. It's, it's really <laughs> famous. And I forget the name of it. And I should know it. I need to Google. So I, Kayla was here. I just yell at her. She would know it. But, um, <laughs> I'm going to think of it as soon as we hang out. But anyway, it's inspired yeah. by them. I, I literally went and got all the same like little mugs that are like Irish coffee shaped. And so I do those. That's my favorite yeah. one. Okay, so. cool. What is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? Uh, holiday cookie or treat. I, I like, I really am a sucker for chocolate, just chocolate chip cookies. Underbaked mm. though. Underbaked. Uh, yes. Yes. It's got that's to correct. That. Yeah. Underbaked just a little bit. That, that, that sweet yeah. spot, thin, but underbaked. Then they stay that, that soft. Uh -huh. Yeah. A little caramelized a little bit like the sugar. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs> I, <approve>. <laughs> I got you going. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite Christmas song or Carol? Oh, it's, um, uh, oh, you know what one gets with Bruce Springsteen, uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. He yes, did like a live okay. version, you know, they play it everyone. Yeah. And then 
he starts laughing halfway through it because I think <laughs> like Clarence is starts pretending to be Santa Claus during his sax solo for whatever reason. There's so much a joy in that performance. <laughs> Yeah. And like Santa Claus is coming out, this is an okay song, but there's so yeah, much like joy and coming. spirit in that. Uh, yeah. Whether that comes on the radio or I play it on my house all the time at Love Springsteen. Yeah. Uh, that would be the one. Cool. Good. What is your favorite classic Christmas movie? Oh, uh, probably this is the uh, National Lampoon's Christmas. Mm -hmm. that, that we yeah. have a tradition here that at the end of, it's actually my wife's tradition. We, we still have high enough it. But at, at Thanksgiving dinner, once it's over and everyone's cleaned up over them, we put on that movie after Thanksgiving to kick off the Christmas season. <laughs> and that's like the signal. Yeah. So I've seen that movie a hundred times easily. Yeah, that one is so funny. Some of my favorite parts. I love when they're like, Grace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, you, you say you... Grace. <laughs> and then she gets up. A and... blessing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then she gets up and does this. this, this... The star Singled Banner. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Pledge of like, Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge Pledge. Pledge. And I Pledge. also. Pledge. You could watch it. I've watched it a hundred times and I still pick up little lines here or there that I've missed. It's so well written. John Hughes. What a, what a guy. Yeah, I also love the whole scene when the squirrel comes out of the tree. <laughs> yeah. so it's, a, it's a small squeaking sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma loved that movie and and she would when she would watch a funny movie, she would like we're like, breathe, grandma, breathe. <laughs> she gets you mean she started yeah. laughing so hard. So hard, yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Uh, that, yeah, that's a, that's a real laugh. Then that's good. yeah, yeah. It's so funny. Mm. All right, good choice. Which do you like better, Scrooge or the Grinch? Oh, the Grinch. Okay, good. The Grinch. Yeah, his heart grows at the end of that. Movie. I don't know. <laughs> Scrooge still has a lot of issues. I think. I guess he learns his lesson from. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a big Scrooge one. Christmas <laughs> I like. Yeah, the Grinch. Well, we figure they're both characters who hate Christmas, but then oh, come like, around, you know, and then so I get good it. comparison. I get it. I get it. All right. Which do you like better, clear lights or colored? Um, I like clear lights. Okay. But like a warm glow, not those. I, there's some fluorescent ones out there. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Just <laughs> a nice little warm glow, like a yeah, like a Ford commercial. <laughs> Something like that. All right. Uh, <laughs> which would you most. rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? Oh, I like the snowball fight. Okay, it depends. Good. It's got to be that perfect temperature, though, where it's, you know, it's it, a lot of snow and then the sun comes out a little bit and just warms the snow enough where you can really uh -huh. get that snowball. I guess that's true. With yeah. The well, I mean, the hard part about building a snowman is you need a lot of snow. Yes. And that. it's got to be that tacky, sticky. Yes. I guess the snowball is kind of the same. But <laughs> no, I like the snowball fight if it's yeah. stays within reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get in trouble. I'll take it too far. You're not going to elevate it. I've been known to take it maybe too far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you consider yourself a good gift wrapper or not? Uh, I am a good gift wrapper. I've been trained. My, my wife, <laughs> oh, trained. My wife is trained. <laughs> She's, <laughs> she is the best. Her corners yeah. are even and uh, I'm pretty good <laughs> at it now. I'm She's like, let's sit down. We're going to go over this. <laughs> yeah, that was early in the relationship. She's like, well, listen. <laughs> I'm not doing all of these, so I'm going to train you to, to be able to do this. Smart on her part. Yeah. Because <laughs> now I can uh, help. Yeah. All right. Last question. Do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? Oh, yes. And what's your ugliest Christmas sweater? Mm. It's like a Rudolph one that kind of, I don't like, here's the thing. They're, I know they're ugly Christmas sweaters, right. but I kind of like them. <laughs> like, I don't like, I, I'm like, you're like, my sweaters fun. look good. Yeah, I know. I'm like, it's just kind of, it's kind of works. I don't know. I've seen them like, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, I think it has like a big, yeah, it has Rudolph on it and it's like three dimensional nice. kind of nice. Yeah. That's a good one. That that's sounds good. <laughs> right, started, good. I don't know who started that, but good on them. Cause it's, yeah. it does make it fun. It does. Yeah. The only problem is sometimes they can be kind of scratchy. Yes, they you got to wear like the t-shirt underneath, and then we're in, yes. I'm in Los Angeles here. It gets hot, and then it's, yeah. like, it's a whole thing. I have yeah. seen this year some Christmas vests, which I'm, I'm like, oh, oh, that's good. I'm going with the vest, yeah, um, which might be a little cooler, mm -hmm. but that's just a California problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, very good. You did it. You answered all the questions. I made it. Okay, yes. good. <laughs> good. We had some good debate. Those are always up. You know. Yeah.
It seemed like we're <laughs> on the same page. So I'm, that's, that's good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you very much for coming to talk with us. And uh, do you have social media you want to share? Uh, yeah, I'm at Tanner Nov at Tanner Novlin underscore. I think on Instagram. I'm on Instagram the most. I got two kids. I got. I'm like I can only really yeah. manage one. I do sometimes Twitter, but for the most part, I'm the Instagram focused guy. Yeah. Well, we'll have that in the description. Then people can follow you and yeah, uh, check it and, out. And, and we'll um and uh, I, I think I'm gonna live tweet during the the on Saturday, uh, December 10th, 8 7 Central Christmas Class Reunion on the Hummer Channel. Very good. Well, yeah, very it's good. Really fun. It's a good one. Well, thanks for coming on and I hope you all have a very, very Merry Christmas. You too. Thanks a lot for having me. All right. Merry Christmas. We'd like to thank Tanner for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun to talk to him. I thought he was great. So let us know what you think of all the different things we talked about. We'd love to hear your thoughts and you can find me at Rachel's reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also make sure you're following the podcast on Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, which helps us out so much. Please take a look at the patron. And we also have our merch store. We can get all kinds of festive designs. So please take a look at that. And thanks again to Tanner. We really appreciate it. And we'll talk to y'all later. Merry Christmas. Thank you.